Hi, I'm back with another Blender tutorial. I know I haven't made one in a while, but now I'm making one on Veroni Shattering. So, this is what Veroni Shattering is. It's basically where it shatters into 3D chunks. So, what we're going to want to do, is the first thing we're going to do, is open up Blender. Next thing we're going to do, is we're going to... Macaulay. Go into file. Um, file. User preferences. Go to add-ons. Go to object. And then under here, under fracture fracture tools, check this. Make sure it is checked. That little checkbox. So. I've already got it checked. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to make something slightly more advanced. And I'm going to show you some more advanced techniques. So what we're going to do is hit X, delete that, add a plane, go up top, scale it up 10 times. And this is basic Blender knowledge, so if you don't know that, uh, go watch like a beginner Blender's tutorial. This isn't necessarily a huge beginner type thing. So we're going to go ahead and raise it up to about here tab and we're going to scale it there we go it's good for the right axis okay that looks like a good scale And now I'm going to so we're gonna hit P and we're actually gonna want to change render to game just so we can have some more options. Go ahead and drag this oops. I don't know what I just did. Oh I accidentally hit it. Um go ahead and go back. Hit P wrong place okay P. okay there we go this is what our scene is and so one of the things that this add-on has is the projectile and I'll go ahead and add one so search and type in project and it'll come up with add projectile right there and want to hit it, and basically it's going to go negative 15 on the y-axis, that's the speed it's going to go at. So we're going to basically just raise it up, scale it down, if we hit zero, it goes right for our cube, which currently doesn't do anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to add rigid body physics to our cube. We're going to hit rigid body. Go ahead and change the boundings and leave them at box. This is what normal rigid body physics are. This isn't shattering. This is just normal physics. As you see, it just flies off. So we'll do that again. I think we'll make this a bit slower. Going into the logic tab, logic editor, and we're going to go ahead and hit it, change it to negative five instead of negative ten. So it goes like that. So, um, we're gonna go back to our timeline. And so now we've got this, basically what we've done now, is we've got this scene. This ball just hits that. Now what we want to do is make it so this shatters. The first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this down to the level of the plane. Actually, no, I'm just going to leave it there just for example for now, but I'll lower it later. So what we're going to do 
We don't want these rigid body physics anymore. We're going to just change this back to static, uncheck this, and so we've just got this plain old thing here. Next thing we're going to do is where all the magic happens. Go here and type frac. F A R C. You go down to fracture object. In this little menu is the space. You just hit space bar. And it's going to bring up this little menu right here. And you have to have the thing selected. What we're going to do is where it says number of shards, change it to something like 25 or maybe 30. I think I'm going to do 25 for this though. Hit enter and just kind of go through these. And then whenever you're done, click execute. And basically it's just going to break your box up into a bunch of little pieces as you can see here. If we drag this down, you'll see it create, created 25 little cubes. So what we're to keep this organized, what we're going to do is we're going to box select this by clicking B. And we're going to group it together. Oops. I didn't I don't think I did the right thing. Ah. What did I just do? Oh. Okay, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, I just messed up there. I didn't want to group it. So what we're going to do is you box select all of these and you go to bin frac and then set up fracture shards and it's going to add all these. So if we go into the game engine, hit P, it's just going to do that. But that's not what we want it to do. We want to sit there statically and just sit there until that ball hits it. Or, well, in most cases, you probably will. So, here's our cube thingy. We're going to lower that. Lower this. But right now, it just falls apart right whenever it spawns. So we're going to box select our thingy again and deselect the projectile. Ah, why is this happening? Okay, well now well, what we're gonna do now is just add anything. We're gonna delete this in just a second, so I'll just add a UV sphere. What we're gonna do and not I'm just gonna set it there for example purposes. So we can go to our logic editor and add sensor always put and then put edit object here and we're going to link these up And then instead of add object, we're going to hit dynamics and suspend dynamics. So basically, when this starts, this sphere is not going to move and we're first going to add physics to it. Because we forgot to do that. We're going to just set collision bounds to sphere. So, right now, this is what it does. But normally, that sphere would bounce. So, what we're going to do. Or, well, it would move. We're going to add a touch sensor. When it touches, then we're going to edit object, dynamics, and then we're just going to leave it at restore dynamics. So that basically means when it starts, pause the object, and when it resumes, restore the object. So now it's going to do that. But what we want to do now is we're going to want to keep that sphere selected and then box select all our shards. And then we're in the space and then hit 
copy. And then copy logic bricks to selected. So now basically, it's going to do the same thing with each one of these individual shards as with this one ball. We can go ahead and delete the ball. And now it's going to shatter like that. So, that's mostly it. And go ahead and go over some render settings real quick. So, I'm going to go ahead and switch. And no, the last thing I want to do is under this little um, world tab here, change substeps to 5, and FPS to 25. And this to one. Basically, this means like max powered physics, like most detailed physics possible. So that's that. And the 25 frames per second is being run everything here at 25 frames per second. So now what you want to do is hit record animation. So basically, we're just going to have it. Record. I didn't mean to do that. Then you hit P, and it's going to go through and record. So now if we hit this, it goes through and it plays our animation like we had it. You might want to like leg this up a little bit. And so we'll go ahead and do. way through and we'll do that and we'll go through some render settings change it back to blender render ambient occlusion there we've got a fancy render and to reduce artifacts we'll go ahead and bump up samples something like eight then what you do is you just render it out as an animation wonder if this means anything never tried this it looks about the same wonder if it would reduce the amount of artifacts but basically that's how you do Veroni shatter physics in blender oops um, I'll show you that video one more time And that's the shatter physics. That's like as rendered out in a video all fancy like. So that's it.